SHP 9500s are a headphone that you see again and again and again on recommendations lists, especially for under $100. But why? Well, these headphones have kind of unique property in the open and closed headphone market, something that was allowing the HD 600s to reign as a top recommendation headphone for over 20 years. Midrange. See, mid-range seems to be something that is, is hard to do at all and hard to do well. When the HD 600 came out, it kind of changed the game. It kind of changed how music was represented. Most of us are used to either a somewhat flat signature or a V-shaped signature. That is what primarily makes up the bulk of what headphones sound like. Now this particular headphone, it's primarily made of plastic. You have a few bits of metal on the armband extension piece and the grills. You have right and left indicators on the actual ear cups themselves. You have this really hot sweat producing canvas material around the ear cups and the headband, an overall comfortable design with very light clamp force that if you move your head around too much, it will slide off of your head. For the cost of these, which can be anywhere between 50 to $85, it is not a bad build, but that's not where these stand out. Where these stand out is the sound quality. Now to get the most out of the sound quality, I do recommend an amp. These are 32 ohm headphones at 102 decibels. They're not the least efficient headphones in the world, but they're also not the most efficient. And you could definitely get something as cheap as like an SMSL SAP6. It's about $50. And you're definitely gonna see a benefit in not only total sound loudness, but sound quality. So these sound good, but what makes them sound good? Primarily, again, it comes down to that rich and textured mid-range focus. Now mid-range tends to cover a lot of vocals. So what you get if you've never heard a mid-range focused headphone is the separation between instruments and the vocalist and it almost is like the vocalist takes a step forward while the instruments and the background music takes a step back that isn't to say there's a loss in detail as much as there's just an emphasis in the vocal ranges now what that actually amounts to is a very very intimate sound and if you've never heard HC 600s first, you're missing out on a very unique opportunity. There are even to this day, very few headphones that can really reproduce how the 600 line sounds. But this is a pretty close knockoff to that. It seems to share the same roots as the HC 600 in terms of how the mid range and the low ranges and the high ranges are reproduced. Although this has slightly wider sound stage and it doesn't have the same pinpoint accuracy of imaging that the HG 600 has. Now, a lot of people compare these two because of the sound and I want to kind of just talk about this headphone from this point forward as being just this headphone just looking at this as a at the time of recording this a $75 headphone is this headphone something that you should put your money into I absolutely think so I think even if you have nicer headphones this is a great alternative headphone it's very good for gaming because of how the sound stage is represented it's one of the best open back headphone designs that are under hundred dollars in my opinion the bass while it does roll off in the sub bass frequencies I'd say anything below like 70 Hertz it's gonna start to kind of take a little bit of a dive but above 70 Hertz it hits with authority there's a power to the sound bass is not the most tight I've ever heard but even considering that I wouldn't consider it to be totally inaccurate either it's kind of right in the middle of it's in the sweet spot where it's not natural but it's not unnatural regarding sound quality there is one issue that comes along with these headphones there's a tiny bit of sibilance in the 4 to 5k range now before that 4 to 5k peak there's actually a dip in the 2 to 3k range and because of that that 4 to 5k peak actually feels even more emphasized so for hard rock with lots of cymbals and some of the upper limits of vocals can actually come across as pretty bright I personally don't consider it to be an uncommon comfortable level, but it's definitely worth noting. And in the end, it's something that I'm gonna really consider for my overall rating. Now the highs for this have been described by some people as being a bit grainy. I personally do not have that opinion. I think that for $75, you have to make some sacrifices in sound quality. To expect these to sound like 200, 300, 400, 500 dollar headphones, I feel is unfair. They are not a perfect headphone, but they are a very 
very, very good headphone and an absolutely wonderful headphone for the price. One more thing I do wanna mention about sound before I get to my conclusion is that these are absolutely a very good gaming pair of headphones. I do recommend the 668Bs a little bit more because of how the sound stage is on those, but these are a headphone that you could go from music and be happy there or go to games and be just as satisfied. Regarding the, the musicality of a headphone, this is a very pleasant headphone. This is a nice headphone to listen to. It's got a unique enough sound signature to where you don't feel like you've heard it too often on various other headphones. It doesn't really sound like many other things in this price range. And even with the bit of sibilance that it does have, it's still something that I can actively listen to or sit down and relax. So it pleases both my gaming side and my audiophile side. And because of the left-handed 3.5 millimeter input that's on on here. You can actually hook up a Vmoda boom mic system that hooks up right through here and just goes directly towards the input for your computer. And that makes this an excellent gaming headset for about a hundred bucks, which is exactly where most of the good gaming headsets start right now. Except the sound quality of the SHPs are actually going to be far and above what you would get on a standard pair of gaming headphones, especially around $100. So in conclusion, this headphone will pretty much always be on my recommendations list for as long as it's available. The sound quality for the price is spectacular. The build quality is perfectly acceptable. The reviews on Amazon, which I believe are over 700 reviews, 4.6 stars out of five. They seem to be loved by the crowd and they are a personal favorite of mine. And I highly, highly, highly recommend them anywhere between the 50 to $85 mark. I think that is a perfect price for these. I am going to give this headphone a nine and a half out of 10. If it wasn't for the existence of the sibilance, which unfortunately with EQ is still not able to be ever totally corrected. And I felt that it was always present no matter what I did, this would have been a perfect product. So you have to sacrifice a little bit for the price. That's just something that comes with the budget audiophile gear, but it's not much of a loss to keep me from recommending these. Even if you're high sensitive like I am, I still really, really, really enjoy these headphones. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. I got a few more reviews. I got these Vanda 2 T0 review coming out on Friday. I'm excited for that because um, they are a spectacular pair of speakers, um, especially for the small stature that they have. They're really, really wonderful. Um, if you would like to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the description down below. Uh, thank you Z for sending these out for me to review. I think this is the last headphone that I have from Z um, left to review. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, again, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. And if you guys wanna help him out for helping me out, the link to Amazon actually goes to his Amazon for these. So definitely check that out. And along with that, the disclaimer is nobody is sending or giving these to me. These are all my opinions, unbiased. I'm not being rewarded by any means by this review. So please take that for what it's worth to you. And let me know what you guys think about this review in the comment section down below. And if you guys have any opinions about these, I think they're a wonderful pair of headphones. I know they're a bit controversial, but I think they're worth it. Thanks very much, guys. My name is Josh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.